Okay, we're going to start off solving systems by using a method called substitution. Which means you're going to substitute one equation into another. So I have two equations and two variables. Y equals 7x minus 10 and Y equals negative 3. Well, how about that? It already gave me one of my solutions. I know Y equals negative 3. My goal is to find my value for X and Y so that when I plug it in, it works for both of these. I have my Y, I just need now to find my X. So what should I do with Y equals negative 3 to help me find? If we're talking about substitution. What can I do with this negative 3? Plug it in. Plug it in to the other equation, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm going to plug in negative 3 here for this Y. Yes. That's going to give me negative 3 equals 7x minus, minus 10. And now I have an equation with just one variable to solve, and I'll go ahead and solve for x. So let me add 10 to both sides. That's going to give me 7 equals 7x. And lastly, divide by 7. I get that x equals 1. x equals 1. So my solution is where x is 1 and y is negative 3. So we're going to write it like it would be coordinates. 1 and negative 3. Coordinates because, well, one of the things, one of the ways you can solve this is algebraically, like I just did here through substitution, but also graph these two lines. If I were to graph y equals 7x minus 10 and y equals negative 3, like I've done here, what are you looking for to determine the solution? Intercepts. The, uh, intercepts. the intersection point, right? Where those two lines meet. And they meet at, hey, what do you know? 1 and negative 3. Exactly what I found. So go ahead, let me give you a second. See if you can solve y equals 6x and y equals 5x plus 7. Algebraically or graphically. <laughs> All right, so I have y equals 6x, y equals 5x plus 7. Doesn't matter which one you pick, but it looks like my best option here is to solve for x first because I want to take this value of y and plug it into this one. So that's going to give me 6x equals 5x plus 7 that I can solve for x. So let me subtract 5 on both sides, or 5x. And that wasn't too bad. That gives me x equals 7. So I now know my x value is 7. How do I find my y value? Uh, yeah, I can substitute or plug it into any one of these equations. This one here is y equals 6x, so let me plug in x for 7. That's going to give me y equals 6 times 7, which is 42. 42. So they get, I get the values of y equals 7, and sorry, x equals 7, and y equals 42. If I were to write that as a solution, I write it as ordered pairs, 7 and 42, just like that. Because if I were to graph this, I would get this as my intersecting point between those two lines. Let's overcomplicate it a little bit. y equals 6x minus 11 and negative 2x minus 3y equals negative 7. So let's start off with the one that has the variable equal to something. So y equals 6x minus 11. What am I going to do with that value? Substitute it for y, right? Right here. Now note, you're not just going to put it in place and do 6x minus 11 without having to put, yes, parentheses. So let's make sure we write this out correctly. Negative 2x minus 3 times, with parentheses, 6x minus 11, equals negative 7. And let's simplify and solve. So negative 2x, I'll need to distribute this negative 3, gives me negative 18x, and a positive 33. Now I can combine my x values, that's negative 20, 
x plus 33 equals negative 7. Let me isolate my variable, subtract 33 on both sides. I get negative 20x equals negative 40. One final step, divide by a negative 20, where I finally get my conclusion that x is equal to 2. I know that x equals 2, how do I find the y? Substitute or just plug it right in. So y equals 6x minus 11. So therefore y equals 6 times 2 minus 11. So y equals 12 minus 11. So y equals 1. So x is 2, y is 1. My solution will be written as an order pair to 1. Like so. So again, not too bad, just to know when you substitute in in this multiplication, you have to add parentheses here. This negative 3 needs to be multiplied to everything that you're substituting in there, the 6x and the negative 11. So go ahead and use that same strategy to solve y equals negative 8x and 2x plus 4y equals 0. So note, if you're trying to plug this into the calculator, this one's okay, y equals negative 8x, but what do you do, need to do with this problem? In order to plug this into your calculator, it needs to be set equal to what? Zero. Not zero. I mean, um, put in the negative 8. I can put it, oh, I see. So yeah, if you're gonna solve it algebraically, oops, you're gonna plug it here. But if you're gonna solve it graphically, for the calculator, I need a y equals and a y equals. So this needs to be, let's move the negative the two out two to one side, so negative two x divide by four. You'll have to plug in negative one half x and negative eight x. Now let me show you the power of Desmos. You don't have to solve for y with Desmos. I can plug in exactly how I see it. So I have negative 8x, there's that line, and 2x plus 4y equals 0. There's that line. So you don't have to set any equation equal to uh, y for the decimals, but you do have to do that on the calculator. Looking at my graph, what is my solution? 0, 0. That's my intersect. So my solution here is 0, 0 is what you should have gotten based on the graph or if you did algebraic. One more type as we complicate this just a little bit more. 4x plus y equals 6, and negative 5x minus y equals 21. Neither of these are set equal to an variable. So what should I do first? I can't just substitute directly as they currently are. Combine? Not quite. I still want to use substitution. One of these needs to be an x equals or a y equals. Oh, flip the negative 4x to the other side. Yeah, so let's move the 4 to the other side. What that is going to give me is a new equation where I have it as a y equals 4x plus 6. Now I could take this and plug it in for y, right? Right there. So if your equation is not set equal to x or a y, you have to make one of them in order to use substitution. All right, that's going to give me negative 5x minus, again with the parentheses here, when you're using substitution, 4x plus 6 equals 21. And let's distribute this negative across here. Negative 5x minus 4x minus 6 equals 21. Combine my like terms, negative 9x minus 6 equals 21. And now let's solve. So add 6, add 6, negative, oops, 
negative 9x equals 27. Last but not least, divide by negative 9, I get an x value of negative 3. Now I need to find the y value. So let me substitute x in here, y equals 4 times negative 3 plus 6, y equals negative 12 plus 6, y equals negative 6. So my solution set is negative 3, negative 6. If I were to graph these two lines, I should see an intersection at this point. Now your turn. Solve 6x plus 6y equals negative 6 and 5x plus y equals negative 13. Props to you if you saw this algebraically. Perfectly fine if you want to solve this graphically. So let me go ahead and plug in these two lines in my graph. And I find that my solution is what? Negative 3, 2. <clears throat> Let's test. Again, these are values you should plug in here, and it comes out to be true. So 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. 6 times 2 is 12. Is negative 18 plus 12 negative 6? It is. So that coordinate worked there. Next, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 15 plus 2 is in fact negative 13, so it does work for that equation as well. <clears throat>